here. Drop for drop, the most venomous snake on the planet. You can see Stevie's actually super dark now, and that's because Thai pans seasonally change colors. So he's a good boy. Whoop. We still don't want him to get anywhere near my skin, though. What's up, dude? You can't eat my catfish. Isn't that so cool, the way they move? They can go in a straight line and just using their muscles to move them forward. Well, it's small as crocodilian, but still packs a punch that can take your hand off no problem. It was nice to get to know you. Guys, I just walked outside to take out the trash and look who just showed up. You gotta be kidding me, he's back. See right there, guys, look. The otter's back. Let's go see, he's, he's sunbathing right now. Oh my God, this is hilarious. I can't believe the otter's back. The alligator's been gone for weeks now. What's going on, squeakers? It's okay, I'm just gonna go to the dock. Oh my God, this is so cool. I love my house. What's going on, otter? Oh, no way, no way. Look at him. Look at, what's up, dude? Oh, he's friendly. Look, he's coming towards me. This is so cool. This is what makes living in Florida so worth it. Just the fact that I can come outside, hang out by my pond, and a wild otter just shows up. What's going on, Squeakers? What's going on? What are you doing? I think he's about to go get out. He might leave now. Hey, stop. Look, he's chasing my red-tailed catfish. Hey, no. I don't want this otter to freaking murk my catfish. I think he's starting to realize how easy it is to get a catfish because they're so much slower. What's up, dude? You can't eat my catfish. Okay, punk? Look at me. You can't eat my catfish. You're not allowed to have my catfish. You understand? Comment below. What should we name this guy? Because this is the second time he showed up and he's basically a family member now. Dude, you cannot eat my catfish. You understand? You naughty little otter. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> this is so cool. What are you doing? What's up? You're just hanging out? Enjoying the well? Look how cool this is. How cool is that? American River Otter hanging out right here at the house. Gosh, so cool. But not cool that he's trying to eat my catfish. You better stop, little squeakers. All right, guys, it's raining now. He's still in the water shooting around trying to get a catfish. Hopefully he's unsuccessful. The good thing is there's so much hydrilla, that aquatic plant life at the bottom, that it creates a layer that all the fish and turtles can actually hide and hide from things like otters. So hopefully they can hide, they can stay away from this guy because I would hate for him to eat one of the red-tailed catfish. He can eat bluegill all day, he can eat my bass, but please don't eat the red-tailed catfish. The only two fish in here that you don't, you're not allowed to touch. So please, that's, that's all I'm asking, squeakers, okay? You got that, squeakers? All right, Justin Brown's on his way. He has to come pick up that male caiman that I have with my Cuvier's Dwarf because he found a home for it. And now I can let my Cuvier's Dwarf be alone and in peace because they're both males and they're kind of fighting over the water and we don't want that. What are you doing, squeakers? <laughs> Leave my catfish alone. Even when it's raining, it's beautiful, baby. Squeakers! Leave him alone, squeakers! As you guys can see, crocodilians love the rain. The new spectacle came and we got Greg or Clyde, comment below what you want to name him, hanging out in the rain, enjoying himself. And you can see the Cuvier's Dwarf right there hanging out in the rain too. And my car does not like rain, so I should probably stop filming this bit. <laughs> Please don't take one of my catfish. I'm really concerned because I did just see him chasing the catfish. My catfish was swimming for its dear life. Let's hope I don't come back from the gym and see him chewing on a catfish on the bank. Man, who the hell? It... Hey, what you doing in my house? What you doing? What are you, what's going on? All, all, all away from my act, boy. Ski! I hope this family ain't waiting on you in this paradise. Hey, let's go get some caiman. I'm just waiting on you in this paradise. Hey, and while we're about to go get this caiman, why not show Justin Brown his baby girl? Don't forget, Justin Brown rehabbed this crocodile from the brink of death. Literally, she had no energy in her and a giant Mama. burn across her back. And now she's nice and healthy. Now she's living with me. She's like, I ain't coming back to you. <laughs> and you notice how chill she's being, too. She's just hanging out. This is a great enclosure, and I think she really, this is what she needed. I'm glad she came down here to you. And there's little fish that come through the pipe. There's bass. There's all kinds. Of, there's literally baby bass in this water, but it's so stirred up from the rain or her kicking it up. And then there she goes. Dude, I'm glad you have her in here. 
I'm glad I have her. Thank you for giving her to me. All right, so we got this Cayman tub draining out right now. We can grab the big male cuviers and get them moved out. Justin's found a spot for him. And uh, what, do, what do you think? We might be able to get a male Siamese crocodile for this female? I'm open. Mm-hmm. Breed some critically endangered crocodilians. Yes, Justin, you got this. No problem. You just reach right on in there. I'll grab, oh, oh. You gotta grab that for you. Are you gonna use that as a... Oh, you're not gonna use your hands. You're gonna do it safely. Look at that. What a beast of a caiman. World's smallest crocodilian, but still packs a punch that could take your hand off no problem. Ooh, oh, hoo, hoo. Quick hands or no hands here at Chandler's Wild World. Have a look at this firefighter. Take on the crocodilian. Look at that T-Rex head. Ooh. There you go, buddy. Woo hoo, hoo. Look at that firecracker right there. Get on that boy. <laughs> he is such a beast. They are fully boned. Bro, this is crazy. Ready how, to go. how thick these boys are. Everyone always gets little dwarf caimans and they never see them to their full potential. There we go. Just enough tape to keep those jaws secure. It was nice to get to know you, but uh, it's time for, time for Fred, you to go. my caiman, to have the whole enclosure to itself. Yep. Until the female is ready to go until she can stop making babies for us. That would be legit. You got that all yourself, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look how dark this crocodilian is. That is so cool. I love nearly all black animals. That is so gnarly. All right, beautiful people. I'm going to show Justin the rest of the place. I'll see you in the next clip. Paku, have a little bit of chicken, Paku. Come, Paku. Oh, that's not a Paku. Those are bluegill. The bluegill might be more savage than the giant Paku from the Amazon in here. But you know who is a savage? Bagoy! Up up! Come on, big boy. Come over here. Woo -hoo -hoo. See all the fish getting spooked as he flies over? Woo -hoo -hoo. Look at you, beautiful boy! He's feeling a lot better after getting his beak filed down a bit. Now he can close his mouth perfect, the food doesn't get stuck on his beak, and he's as handsome as ever. Ooh, happy bird noises! Today, we're gonna go take care of some snakes. Inland Taipan, little Stevie, drop for drop, the most venomous snake on the planet. He's getting bigger. He's probably like three and a half times bigger than when I originally got him. He was a little death noodle. Now he's big enough to get a vision cage. So let's go upgrade him, take care of him, see what else is going on in the Serpentarium. Look at this behemoth of a boa constrictor. What are you doing, baby? What are you doing? Ugh, this boa constrictor was donated to me from a fan that lives locally and decided the enclosure wasn't big enough. So he gave this beautiful boa constrictor for me so I can use her for an educational ambassador. She is so beautiful, look at her. I love this snake and she just came through shed. So she's getting as big as can be. Ooh, that's actually a really big shed. Look at this, boa constrictors. Ooh, oh, okay, it broke, Never mind. But anyways, beautiful people, we got a lot of cool stuff going on. Check this out, I got Jack over here. He's ready to eat. Oh, let me get my special feeding tongs. We don't want to make a mistake with a, with a lizard with tiger shark teeth. We got some chicks defrosted, give them some enrichment. Let's hope this bow constrictor doesn't like chicks as much. Jack, what are you doing? Come on, Jack. Oh, hoo -hoo. look at you, my beautiful boy. What are you doing? Come on, Jack, this bow constrictor. It's getting real tight around my neck. Come on, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, look at that. Big dusty boy, soon Jack is actually gonna be leaving the Serpentarium and we'll have more space for build outs for snakes. Cause he's a big boy. He's eventually gonna be six and a half feet long, making him the second largest lizard in Australia. So we gotta get him a nice big outdoor enclosure with maybe like a tree in the center. He's gonna be so happy. All right, let's get him. Oh, big boy. Right back inside the enclosure. Get in there. Get in there, big boy. Ah. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Future King Cobra enclosure, Wee! Trying to get this done as fast as possible, but don't forget, I'm not building this cage. I got a contractor doing it, so I gotta work with their schedule. But don't worry, as you can see, it's gonna happen. All right, let's put this big old boa constrictor down. Another awesome animal to look forward to that you guys can handle on a tour and not have to worry about a deadly venom. All right, let's get it right in there and let's go take care of Stevie the top hand. Ooh, all right, let's get the snake home receptacle moved. And get Stevie the inland Taipan. But before we look at Stevie the inland Taipan, look at this! Allison the Black Mamba. Ooh, hoo, hoo. You are such a beautiful woman. I can't believe that there's bigger Black Mambas here in America. I just heard that there's potentially a pair of nearly 14 foot long Coke can thick Black Mambas that need a new home. Chandler, you have plenty of deadly snakes. Why would you need more Mambas? Shh! Shh! Who said that?
I don't need to listen to you. Anyways, beautiful people, let's take care of some little Stevie, the inland tie pan. We'll use his hide for now. Eventually, we'll get some new stuff for him too. So he has more spaces to hide amongst, hide amongst the dry aspen. Pick an aspen because they come from the outback of Australia. It's dry. It's real dry. As Dingo would say, it's, it's dry than a camel's crotch. Oh, harder than a camel's crotch. Something about a camel's crotch. I really want a camel. Comment below. Where can I get a camel for free? Do you know camels cost her $6,000 right now for a baby? Oh my God. And that's for one hump, baby. I don't even want two humps. Two humps is extra money. All right, beautiful people. If we're gonna put this tie pan inside this enclosure, we have to make some modifications. So we've of course got our lock to keep people from opening up this enclosure willy nilly, because this is a dangerous little reptile right here. Drop for drop, the most venomous snake on the planet. Doesn't mean it wants to waste its venom on you. It's just for survival in the outback when food's very scarce, they need really fast acting venom to take down their prey. So we wanna make sure that this is nice and secure. We're gonna take our insulation, same thing we use for mambas that are young, same thing we will be using for the fertilance right over here. Good insulation to make sure that these guys can't escape. Even if it's like a hog nose or a garter snake, this is great stuff to use. You get it right from Home Depot. So I just line it up, get the adhesive side onto the glass, right down to the lock where it has to stop. There we go. And even though it's pretty tight right in between the bottom of the glass and the track for the lock, we're still gonna put a little bit of insulation foam right here so nothing can escape from this enclosure. We don't want any mistakes with venomous reptiles. Even though this is a snake-proof room, and if they get out of the enclosure, they can't get out, it's still a hazard for somebody like myself to walk in a room not knowing if something's out. So I like to be very, very, very particular on how tight Nick every little crevice is. Yeah, just like that. And we're going to take out the inland tie pan. We've got several species of tie pan on the planet, all of them of which are very, very toxic, drop for drop. Oxyuranus is the name of the family. Ooh, and you can see little Stevie. You can see Stevie's actually super dark now, and that's because tie pans seasonally change colors. So he's actually like in his winter colors right now. So he's got the darker colors to help absorb more heat. So what we're going to do is take his hide, put it right there in the enclosure. And now I'm going to fill up his water dish so he's good to go. Just a little bit of H2O for my son. There we go, a little Steve after Steve Irwin because Steve Irwin presented these first to me when I was a little kid, watching him on TV. And in his honor, we named our Taipan Steve. Oh, I'm sorry, little twitchy guy. How you been doing, huh? My little Taipan noticed that the Taipan has a, ooh, notice the Taipan has great coloration on the belly. They have spotting, they have orange, they look so beautiful. And these snakes are actually pretty laid back. They're not psycho, they're not, it's nothing like a black mamba, a fertilance, or eastern dimeback rattlesnake. These guys are pretty laid back and they want nothing to do with people. And in reality, they killed nobody. Nobody comes into contact with these snakes. The only people who get bit are people that work with snakes going to look for them out in the outback. But he's a good boy, whoop, but we still don't want him to get anywhere near my skin though. One little thing inside my body that I could be bleeding all over the place and dead within a day. So let's get him whoop, right into the enclosure. There we go, little Stevie, my boy, my top hand. He's squiggling around. He's like, oh my goodness, all these extra, all this extra space for activities. So we're good, nice and tight, double check, locked and secure, good to go. And I think we got one last thing to do. Let's clean the Gaboon Vipers. Look at my beautiful girls. My Gaboon Vipers are coming out of shed, looking beautiful. Let's just gently take them out. Ooh, -hoo -hoo, I hear you. Miss little little cranky pants. Gaboon vipers are amongst the most famous venomous reptiles. They have the world's longest fangs of any venomous reptiles. They have the biggest venom yield of any venomous reptile, which actually makes the king cobra look small because these guys actually get a head bigger than a king cobra. So they do have a bigger venom yield, which means they can dump more venom when they bite you. Not that they want to bite you, honestly. A lot of Gaboon Vipers are fairly laid back snakes. Look at this, we got one Gaboon Viper that's got some stuck shed right around the nostrils. Let's see if we can get that off. There we go, nice little piece of skin that just got a little stuck. Eye cap and nostril scales right there. So these are my two Gaboon Vipers. You can see there's like a big drastic difference. This one's like wash out white and this one's beautiful and pink. Love Gaboon Vipers. The rest of the shed is in here. So you can see they're growing no problem. These snakes can actually get over five feet long, nearly six feet long with a head that big, huge. Imagine the fang is gonna snake that big. Roughly two and a half, three inches long. 
or to see Wiggle Wiggle full show. All right, the enclosure's nice and clean. Let's get these kabooms back where they belong. Isn't that so cool, the way they move? They can go in a straight line and just using their muscles to move them forward. Just like the puff adder, because they're in the same family. That is so cool. I'll let this one keep crawling around. I'll grab this one right here. Nice and easy, nice and easy. Just a little bit of redirection. Look at that beautiful kaboom viper. Obviously never handle venomous reptiles in this manner. I've been doing this my whole life. This is all I do. If you don't have the experience to be doing this, you're gonna be putting yourself at risk of death. And that is no exaggeration. People who get bit by these snakes literally, I'm gonna use the hook for this one, literally, bleed out their butt and die. There's actually a cardiotoxin in their venom which attacks your heart and shuts it down. So they are a very, very respectable species. Even though they can put you in a false lull that they're super chill. Lock it, come on, lock it. Secure, good, two, go. We're great. All right, beautiful people. I will see you on the next one. Comment below what you want to see next. Comment below. Do you want to see me take on a, an African lion when I go to Africa in August? Do you want to see me grab the tail of a male lion with the biggest mane on the Serengeti? Because I got the real mane, brother. I'll grab his tail, say, hey, and then the lion's going to turn around and be like, ah, and scurry off into the bush. At least that's how it goes in my head. Don't, don't grab lions by the tail, kids. Anyways, beautiful people, I will see you on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe, and don't forget to do what you guys love in life. This, this is what I love. This makes me want to dance. Come on, come on. Oh, 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 ow. Yikes, just squished my acorns. Okay, love you guys, see you on the next one. Oh, no, it's going up inside me, bye.